through the brain. This portion, 50% of the neuron. That means the remaining 50% have to be found throughout that huge cerebrum and the area of the brain stem. And 50% are found in this little teeny tiny portion. Hmm. Wonder why. In that brain stem, and there are actually organisms out there, but the only thing they have is a brain stem. So the only action that they do are instinctual. That's it. That they they can't have any type of compassion or empathy or sympathy or anything else. They are simply functioning on those instincts to survive. Getting food, not being a predator, that sort of thing. The brain stem, the diencephalon, the midbrain, the pons, the medulla oblongata. These are going to be the components that are going to function the same way for us. It's going to be instinctual. It's going to be making sure that we get food, that we take care of our thirst, that we procreate. It's going to be the cerebrum that will bring in higher order thinking. Higher order thinking is going to come from the cerebrum. The cerebellum and the brain stem, they are going to be, for the most part, the areas that are going to allow us to remain upright, have the ability to have balance, keeping our blood pressure correct, making sure that we um, satisfy hunger, satisfy thirst, all that sort of fun stuff. When you dissect the brain, it's, I mean, in the grand scheme, of things. When you get to dissect it and you cut it apart, I mean that is really right there what you get to see. Alright? Now, the neurons that are present, of course, are going to be too small for you to actually, for the most part, be able to see. Um, it, we still have a lot that we're actually learning about the different components of the brain and what they do, how they function, what they affect, and so on and so forth. Um, it, it's really interesting, to say the least. And this is, believe it or not, this is tough but delicate to tissue if that makes sense, okay? Um, I know that, let me just put it to you this way. Anyone who goes into the area of neuro, okay, they get what they, they, they definitely earn what they, they, they charge, all right? I know for me, if somebody was going to have to cut off the top of my skull, root around in there with a stick, I want them to know what they're doing, okay? Because they have learned that in certain areas of the brain, it is going to have control over something. This area of the corpus callosum, where it's this, I mean, I mean, it's a huge, tough, very tough bundle of nerve fibers. Their job 
making sure the two halves communicate. Now that's kind of cool. They have learned with this diencephalon look what it contains. The diencephalon made up of my thalamus and my hypothalamus. What's that? Or better yet, do you know what it's connected to? There are two systems that are going to control the body. Well, if there's two systems, the nervous system and the endocrine system, right now, we're in, in the nervous system, but it's showing in this area of my brain, the thalamus and the hypothalamus. Guess what that is connected to? My pituitary gland. Uh, gland, which is also known as the master gland of what system? Endocrine. What did I just say? Controls the body, the nervous, and the endocrine. So in reality, what is technically controlling my endocrine? Hmm. Remember this, because this is going to come back to it. Okay? In the, mid uh, in the brain stem, midbrain, pons, medulla oblongata, each one having certain activities that it's going to deal with, just like areas of the cerebrum are going to do and just like the cerebellum is going to have certain activities it's going to do. Once again we've got the gray and the white matter. Something that we've talked about. We know that if it's the white matter that is going to be the very well <coughs> myelinated axon. In the pictures, in the plastic model, <clears throat> what color is that um, corpus callosum? The white. Very myelinated axon. Because their job, making sure the two have are going to communicate. The gray matter, where do you kind of see the gray matter? In the pictures and on the model. You're seeing it all to the outside. If you open it up and look at it, looks like the majority of it is the gray matter. Is that correct? In the gray matter, we're going to find, now, let's think back to what we think of as our structure of, an, of a nerve cell. Got that nerve cell body, got the dendrite, got the axon, and the terminal end. In the gray matter, I find my neurosoma. What part is that? My nerve cell body and dendrite. And then my areas of synapse. 
So how is it that this is going to work? Okay, so let's say these are dendrites, nerve cell body, nerve cell body, acts on my terminal end. That would, when we look at the terminal end of a nerve cell, Alright, so my dendrites, nerve cell body, axon, terminal end. Those terminal ends synapse with one of three things. Alright, that terminal end will synapse with number one, muscle. How many types of muscles do we have? Three. So therefore that could be skeletal, smooth, cardiac. Or number two, it can synapse with a gland. Hmm? What? What do you mean by that? All right, I could mean my pituitary gland. It could be. And then I heard somebody say it. Or, did you say it very That's going to get really interesting. It can synapse directly with the adrenal gland. Or number three, another neuron. So the terminal end of one nerve cell has one of these three choices to synapse on to. That make sense? So in the gray matter, there's neurosomas, dendrite, synapses can be found. We're going to find that for the brain, we get something created over the cerebrum, all right? So if you look at the cerebrum, think of like this sort of like outer portion, and it's termed the cortex. Do you remember from the last chapter when we talked about some of those tracks, T-R-A-C-T's, the ascending and the descending? We had, for example, the corticospinal. That meant that it started in this area up here, known as the cortex, traveled down to the area of the spine. Okay. Now the other thing that we have within this structure of the brain, the cerebellum, the the the, the brain stem, we're going to find that we have areas of very Dense nerve cell body. So that means that in these, there are going to be areas more deep to the brain. They're going to be termed nuclei. All right, and it's going to be like this little, it, well not single, but it's going to be this bundle of my nerve cell body to go back to thinking about your structure of that nerve cell. So when you hear the term nuclei, that's what it's going to refer to. Once again, we've got our meninges, something that we've already talked about, those connective tissue wrapping. However, this time we're going to check to see